What is up, guys? Welcome to our Week 4 Team Builder for the GBA D-League. This week we are taking on Jolt and his Toronto Staraptors. Finally, after three long weeks, we uh, finally face off against each other. And as you guys know, if you did watch our last battle, we do have a tied record at 3-0, both with a plus 11 record. So... This is going to be a hype one, guys. It's going to be very, very interesting. Now, uh, Jolt's team is obviously one of the superior teams in the uh, D-League by far. Uh, up there with mine, for sure. And uh, not to brag or anything, but just on pa based on power rankings alone, we, we have this information. Tom and Mono obviously uh, greatly uh, liked both our teams. So going over his team, he, of course, as on the right side, you can see he has Mew, Mega Kangaskhan, Nidoqueen, Tornadus Therian, Cobalion, Seismitoad, Zoroark, Deancey, that's a regular Deancey, of course. We got Rotom Heat, Gorgeist, which can be any form, and the Scolipede. So, looking at our team matchup, uh, first thing I notice is that Thunderous can do a lot of work in this matchup. The problem is, I, I heavily believe that Jolt is going to be prepared for Thunderous and he's going to have an immediate response to it. So, I might leave it on the back burner. Um, then, looking at it, Salamence has a really good matchup, both as a setup sweeper and possibly another set, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, Infernape has a decent matchup, but it has to deal with Seismitoad, it has to deal with things like Deancey, Rotom, which it can't hit for super effective damage and one of its stabs is resisted, uh, Scolipede can speed boost past it, so it becomes difficult for Infernape. Then we look at the rest of the team. Defensively, Crest has a really good matchup. It only really fears Zoroark and Toxic uh, in general. Metagross, not so great because he has a lot of, uh, well, he has two ground types. He has great coverage across his team for it. Zoroark can hit it for super effective damage. Scolipede can hit it with Earthquake or even Z, uh, Megahorn, <coughs> Savage Spinout. Decidueye, uh, also decent, doesn't deal too well with Mega Kangaskhan, despite the fact that Mega Kangaskhan can't hit it outside of coverage or Toxic. Um, but I can't really hit Mega Kang hard either, so Decidueye not too strong. Umbreon uh, has a decent matchup, once again, can check a lot of his, uh, both his physical offense and his special offense decently well at both ends. Uh, the only real thing it fears is Scolipede and Deancey. Uh, Quillfish is a great check to Scolipede uh, if I have an air balloon, can't hit me super effectively with anything at that point. Uh, it can check a lot of his physical offense, once again, like Cobalion or uh, Mega Kang. Uh, we'll we'll see if it comes. We got Pillaswine, which also has a decent matchup because of its priority. It's able to hit uh, Tornadus T for super effective damage. It can deal good damage to the Zoroark, to the um, the Deancey, the Scolipede, uh, all of those things. The Nido Queen especially can potentially carry Freeze Dry for the Seismitoad. <clears throat> we got Mega Blastoise, which in my opinion probably has the be best matchup against his team with uh, just Scald and Dark Pulse, really. Uh, can really put a damper on Jolt's team, and he really doesn't appreciate switch, uh, switching into either one of those stabs, in quotations. And then we have uh, Zangoose, of course, at the bottom. Uh, the reason I'm going through the full list is that this time I really want to give you guys an idea of my thought process on how I look at the team before I start building. So, uh, Zangoose uh, obviously can do a lot of damage, but it's outsped by a lot of things, so it does struggle there. So, let's get into the team. The first one I decided to bring, obviously, the one that you probably uh, guessed is Mega Blastoise because I did uh, say that Water and Dark Stab uh, on this thing is going to absolutely plow through <laughs> Jolt's team. He doesn't have anything to take it too well. The only thing that can resist uh, or be immune rather to my Water Stab is going to be Seismitoad. Doesn't take Dark Pulse too well, and I do have Toxic on there for the Seismitoad, as well as to wear down things like Mega Kang, Tornadus T if it does come Assault Vested to take on my Mega Blastoise, anything like that, including Deancey, uh, Rotom Heat. Nothing really appreciates getting a Toxic. <clears throat> and then I have Rapid Spin. So as you can guess, the reason I have Rapid Spin is because I'm bringing either Thunderous or Salamence. One of the two is coming. Now, uh, leave a comment down below if you're at this point in the video and you uh, want to guess which one of the two is coming and you haven't seen it yet. Uh, and if you've already gone past the point where you do see that Mon, then you're a cheater and your comment is invalid. So you're only lying to yourself. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we got Mega Blastoise. Uh, it's modest with, um, you actually, you're actually going to see the EVs on screen this time, thanks to Jose, the shiny Weavile, who did suggest that I do put the EVs on screen, but I'll also be saying them out loud for you guys. So we got 148 HP, uh, 156 special attack with a modest nature and 204 speed. So let me explain the speed first, obviously. The speed is enough to outspeed Mew. Uh, or any base 100 really, uh, even though his only base 100 I think is Mew uh, and Mega Kang. 
Uh, his base 100s, so Mew and Mega Kang that are trying to speed creep adamant base 70s like my Metagross and my Decidueye, I am able to outspeed those base 100s, essentially. Uh, now, the other big reason this thing is coming, I have 148 HP investment. This is enough to take Scallopedes plus 2 Mega Horn as long as it's not a Savage spin out. Uh, after Rocks, I can take it. And I can hit, uh, my, I can hit his Scallopede. The one that I'm expecting him to bring is going to have enough speed to speed creep my Infernape and my Mence, my Infernape that is speed creeping his base 100s once again. Um, and with that amount of bulk on his Scallopede, I'm able to hit him for a minimum of 66.8% with Scald. Uh, factoring in the possibility of burn and the possibility of rocks being up, he might even go down to the Scald. So getting rid of Scallopede is going to be a very, very big priority of mine. Because that thing is scary, uh, and it can absolutely destroy my team if it brings the right coverage. So, uh, that being said, uh, I am carrying Dark Pulse, of course, for the fact that he has a Spin Blocker in Gorgeist, and that I can hit Mew for super effective damage. I think uh, I do 66.8% uh, to uh, that Scallopede, but I do something around 70. Uh, if he's max Spideff Mew, uh, with enough speed for my base uh, 70s at Adamant, then I'm doing 51 to 56, which is an, something like a 96% chance to two-hit KO after leftovers. So that's, that's actually really, really good. Uh, so I'm able to two-hit KO Mew, and I should outspeed that variant in theory. So uh, that's really nice. Now, um, going into my building process, one of the big things was Jolt needs to absolutely bring the perfect team to beat me, I feel. Uh, that's because a lot of his mons are going to have four uh, move slot syndrome against me. Mew being one of them. Uh, the fact that it needs Defog for rocks, or else his Zoroark, his uh, Tornadus, his Scallopede especially, are all going to be chipped away by rocks, which is really nice for me to make sure that uh, things get into a certain range so that I can kill them. Uh, if his Mew carries Defog, it might not have Recovery and Roost. If it has both, then it might not have uh, a coverage for my Mega Blastoise and always have to switch out. If it has coverage for my Mega Blastoise, it probably doesn't have anything for my Cresselia or my Umbreon. So that's the thought process there is that uh, if he brings Mew, it's going to be very hard for him to decide which four moves to bring against me. So uh, that's really what I looked at. I looked at Mew and I looked at Mega Kangaskhan and that brings me into my next Mon, which is Blair the Umbreon. So um, I'm rocking Rocky Helmet. Uh, no pun intended, this uh, this week, specifically for the Mega Blastoise, uh, not the Mega Blastoise, the Mega Kangaskhan, excuse me. So I could easily bring Quillfish, which gets Intimidate. I could easily bring uh, Decidueye, which uh, also takes physical hits decently well if he EV'd correctly. I could bring Cresselia with a Rocky Helmet, but I opted for uh, Umbreon because the best way that Kang has to deal with Umbreon is one of two things. One is going to be Toxic, in which case Kangaskhan poisons itself even behind a sub. So if you bring sub toxic, I still get a poison off on him. His other way to deal with Umbreon is going to be through power up punch. Now I expect a little bit of a bulkier variant of Venga Kang so that he can potentially take a hit from uh, Salamence. So in theory, even if he hits me with the double hit of power up punch into double hit of return, I shouldn't die. And he's going to take four hits of Rocky Helmet. Assuming he brings sub, he's almost dead. So, uh, and if he boosts his attack, I have foul play. So this is what I feel is going to be my best check to his Mega Kang. I didn't talk about the EVs, but of course, we have 252 HP, 164 in defense with a bold nature, and then I have 92 Spit F. This is just to make sure that I can take on uh, any variant of Nidoqueen, uh, even some variants of a Zoroark outside of Nasty Plot. Uh, I can actually take a, I can take two Moon Blasts from uh, Deancey as well, which is a big thing. So... Uh, the reason I'm mentioning Deancey is because it's very, very important that Deancey not come for me to sweep this game. And if it comes, I have multiple ways of dealing with it. So, moving on. Uh, now that we have our Mega Kangaskhan check, we have a decent check to everything like Seismitoad, to uh, Nidoqueen, Mew. Uh, basically, a big offensive threat in Gamagori, our Mega Blastoise. We got Umbreon, which is our check to Mega Kang. Now I need to check to his Cobalion and to his Nidoqueen. Even though I don't think Cobalion is coming, I'm almost certain Nidoqueen is. So, we are bringing Cresselia once again. Serenity with Psychic, Substitute, Thunder Wave, and Moonlight. So, Thunder Wave is something that I really, really like on Cresselia, uh, especially this week, because if his Mew gets incapacitated with the Thunder Wave, uh, even if I get Thunder Wave back, I don't care. I have Heal Bell on my Umbreon, as you guys saw. 
We didn't talk about the moves, but it's pretty straightforward. It's always the same thing. Um, Thunder Wave is really nice for hitting everything but his ground types. If you bring Seismitoad, once again, I'll be kind of surprised. It does deal with my Infernape decently well, but I think he's going to bring something else for Infernape. Uh, defensive Mew, possibly. Uh, doesn't deal too well with Swords Dance, but it can still take a hit and Psychic me back. Uh, he always has the potential of uh, Fake Out Pressure from the Mega Kangaskhan, which obviously hurts. He has a possible uh, Physically Defensive Rotom Heat, Physically Defensive Deancey. So all of those things are possibilities. Um, being such that I don't think he needs to bring Seismitoad against me, and I think Nidoqueen's a lot better in this matchup, uh, just because of what it lures in and what it kills. So, uh, Cresselia is going to be one of my biggest responses to that, as well as Cobalion, because setup Cobalion is very, very scary to this team, as you guys are going to see. So, Psychic deals with, uh, of course, somewhat Mega Kangaskhan. Nidoqueen, uh, Cobalion, it deals with uh, the Rotom Heat, the Scallopede, essentially, uh, especially because I don't want that thing setting up in front of me. Uh, and then I have Substitute, and the reason I have Substitute is that if, uh, once again, Mew. Mew, I expect to bring Taunt, and I expect his entire team to be very, very Taunt-heavy. So, uh, if for some reason he doesn't find room for Taunt on any one given Mon, be it Mew, be it uh, Tornadus Therian, uh, the Nido Queen, I can always get up a sub on them. And then I'm behind a sub, and I can play accordingly from there. Scallopede doesn't immediately threaten me out. It has to worry about Psychic. Zorark doesn't immediately threaten me out. I can Thunder Wave it. He can go for U-Turn if he wants. I don't really care. I'll still get a Thunder Wave off on something else. Uh, and then, of course, Moonlight is nice for the recovery. So I am bold uh, with the EV spread being... Uh, 252 HP, 220 in defense, and 36 in spit F. The 36 in spit F is just to make sure that I can take Nido Queen's hits as well as possible, uh, as well as Zoroark's if it decides to bring a Z Dark move. Uh, I can possibly take it from full, so uh, that's nice. Leftovers, of course, because I need some sort of recovery on my team, considering that Umbreon is, of course, a Rocky Helmet set. So uh, that is Serenity. Moving on, we have our biggest win condition this game, which is going to be. Salamence! So there it is, guys. If you did answer Salamence in the uh, comment section down below, congratulations. We have Adamant, Moxie, Choice Scarf. It's the first time I'm bringing Choice Scarf Salamence ever, I believe, uh, in my history of League format. Uh, I've only had Salamence twice, but uh, I've always brought different sets than Scarf. But this week, looking at his team, Scarf is really, really strong. So, Outrage can do a number to his team. Being that I do not expect Cobalion, and the Deancey is, while a decent bring, it's not a guaranteed. Outrage spam in the late game is super strong against him, especially that I don't want to lock myself into Earthquake as much as humanly possible because of the possibility of air balloons. I don't want anything stopping my sweep, essentially. Uh, Dragon Claw is there in case I don't need to lock myself into Outrage so I don't have to get the confusion. And uh, the reason I'm adamant is, once again, actually this, this set, I have, uh, as you can see on screen, 52 HP. Uh, 252 attack with an adamant nature, 4 in defense, 4 in spidef, and 196 speed. So this is actually just slightly faster uh, than, I believe, anything outspeeding. Uh, so his Mega Kang, for example, or his Mew, if they decide to outspeed my Mega Blastoise at max speed, I am faster than them. So I completely outspeed them. So that is perfect. Um, granting, of course, that they're Choice Scar variants themselves, right? So... Uh, including Nido Queen if it comes Choice Scarf with Thunderbolt and Ice Beam, uh, then I'm faster than that if he decides to only speed creep my Blastoise, uh, which is very, very possible because he wouldn't need to go any faster than that. Uh, and this also outspeeds uh, his Tornadus T at max speed. It outspeeds his, uh, his Zoroark, obviously. It outspeeds uh, Scallopede, everything. Uh, so the only thing that really threatens this is Protect from Scal Scallopede into Rock Slide. And even that, that doesn't kill unless he's Life Orb, and I've taken uh, Stealth Rock hit. So... Um, considering that, that's why Blastoise is very important with Rapid Spin. If I can keep rocks off the field, I can bring this thing in repeatedly and really put on a lot of pressure onto his team. So, the biggest problem in this thing's way. Uh, two things. Defensive Rotom Heat. That could be a big issue. Cobalion. Uh, so three things, actually. Cobalion is another one that stops my sweep through Dragon-type stab. And Deancey. So, Deancey's the big issue. Obviously, Deancey doesn't have a great matchup. Uh, it doesn't deal well with Mega Blastoise, it doesn't deal well with Cresselia in general, it doesn't deal well with the next Mon on our team, which you're about to see. Uh, and so I don't expect it to come, and that's why I'm bringing the Outrage for the sweep. And uh, should this work, um, great. If he brings the Deancey, however, I need a way to lure it, and I need a way to kill it. And this is going to be the absolute best way, which is going to be BML the Zangoose for the first time this season, guys. This is the first time it's coming. 
Jolt loved me for picking up this mon. I really hope he loves me after I use it against him and if it does a lot of work because it can do a lot of work. So I did mention at the beginning of the video that Zangoose's biggest problem against this team is that it uh, struggles to outspeed things. So you can see its speed hits 141, whereas Salamence hits 145. So uh, this is because I want to be adamant. Uh, specifically to get off as much damage as possible on Mew, on Nidoqueen, on the K Mega Kangaskhan, uh, on any one of his switch-ins really to this thing because it, this thing can do a lot of damage. Obviously this thing is hardwalled by um, by Gorgeist. Zangoose is completely hardwalled by uh, Gorgeist, but I don't expect Gorgeist to come uh, because it's another thing that doesn't have a great matchup against me outside of like potentially leech seeding everything, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, it does struggle against Mega Blastoise, which can often come in. So, uh, being that I am Toxic Orb, Toxic Boost, Adamant, uh, I do hit DNC hard enough with Facade for Iron Tail to knock it out after. And should I be able to do that at some point during the game, uh, we will more than likely sweep with Salamence. Should he have a Choice Scarfer with HP, I say uh, Tornadus Therian or Zoroark. If any one of those reveal, if either one of those reveals to be Choice Scarfed, it makes the uh, game a lot easier. That's the thing, though, uh, is that if Joel does bring Choice Scarfers against me, their validity in the matchup becomes less uh, than ideal for him. So. Uh, that's why I'm bringing Zangoose. Uh, it does outspeed a lot of things, like Defensive Mew, uh, even a bulkier Kangaskhan, uh, Nidoqueen generally, Seismitoad, uh, Deancey, most Rotom Heat, uh, because I am, uh, in fact, speed creeping, I believe, base 70s, uh, a little bit more than base 70s on Jolly. I'll actually just check that really quickly. So let's say Metagross, Alphonse, Jolly, uh, Jolly Not Lax, thank you. Uh, with 252 speed hits, uh, 134, so I am faster than, I'm actually a lot faster than that. Uh, I think I might even be faster than a max speed Nidoqueen, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so let's just see, max speed Timid. We're gonna find this out right now together, guys. So 252, Timid, and that hits uh, at level 50, uh, 140. So yes, I am faster by one point than a max speed Nidoqueen. So... Uh, that is the reason for the speed. Now, another important reason that this thing is coming is because of Quick Attack. As as dumb as that sounds, Quick Attack does a lot of damage to him late game, especially to his sweepers such as Scallopede, Nasty Plot Zoroark, uh, Mega Kangaskhan with Power Up Punches Up, uh, Choice Scarf or Choice Specs Tornadus, anything like that. All of his sweepers, this thing does a tremendous amount of damage to, so... Uh, that's the idea behind bringing quick attack is that I need that priority in the late game to be able to ensure that I don't get swept by anything uh, There are a few select mons like Cobalion of course which can still pull it off But Cobalion has to deal with Cresselia as long as it's alive It also has to deal with Salamence's earthquake So it makes it a little bit harder for it Scallopede on the other hand doesn't have to worry about anything So I need some sort of priority to deal with it Scallopede's one of his scariest mons So there you go Moving on to our last mon I opted for Toshiro, the Pillow Swine, this time around. I think I've brought Pillow Swine twice and Metagross twice now. So I'm really uh, liking how, uh, it might just be coincidence, but I'm really liking how I'm able to vary up my stealth rockers from week to week uh, and keep it unpredictable, sort of. So <clears throat> we are Impish, of course, with a uh, with an Oblivious uh, ability because the amount of taunt he has on his team is ridiculous. Cobalion, uh, Tornadus, Nidoqueen, the Mew, uh, the Zoroark, there's just too much taunt, and I, I don't like being taunted, so Oblivious is there to make sure that I get up the Stealth Rocks. Ice Shard is there to cover, of course, like I said, uh, as much priority as possible for the Scallopede is going to be really nice. So Scallopede is going to have a little bit of an issue against me because uh, if it doesn't run Protect, it doesn't guarantee up Speed Boost against my Salamence. If it doesn't run Swords Dance, it doesn't reliably break anything outside of uh, maybe Cresselia. Umbreon it can kill too, I believe, but it's still tough because I do have the Rocky Helmet, I have the Foul Play and whatnot, and I don't think it Oko's me. Um, if he... So that's Protect, that's Swords Dance. Now if he brings Protect and Swords Dance, he only has two coverage moves. If he brings Rock Slide and Megahorn, then he can't hit my Pillow Swine for super effective damage. If he brings Aqua Tail and Megahorn, then he can't hit my Salamence for super effective damage. See, this is what I mean about him having four move slot syndrome. I think Jolt is going to struggle a lot picking which four moves he wants on each given Mon, uh, whereas it's pretty straightforward for me. So Earthquake is going to be very nice, of course, for the Nidoqueen, for the Cobalion, for the Deancey, uh, for the Scallopede, Ice Shard, of course, we did mention uh, to be able to break sweeps. 
uh, from his Tornadus once again, from his Nidoqueen, from his Scalopede, uh, from Zoroark, and then we have uh, Stone Edge. Stone Edge is there to make sure that his Rotom Heat isn't a guaranteed switch into me, and uh, that his Tornadus has to think about switching into me as well. So uh, it's very nice. Of course, we do have, I believe, 20 attack EVs. I'm not checking my EVs anymore. Uh, you guys did see um, the ones on Zangoose, of course, but Toshiro is uh 252 hp 236 defense with an impish nature so pretty much i can take any hit from uh scallopede i'll actually just calc that up for you guys real quick so scallopede plus two uh adamant let's say uh even though actually i think he has to be jolly against me uh versus my pillow swine to shiro with uh level 50 of course megahorn plus two with the z move does 86 max so it doesn't even kill me after rocks so, and I can hit him for 47% with, uh, from 47 to 56% with my Earthquake. My Ice Shard does 18 to 22 guaranteed range of quick attack after those two hits. So as long as I keep my Pillow Swine decently healthy, which is tough uh, for a Stealth Rocker in general, like unless you're really, really forcing something out, like Nidoqueen, for example, but Nidoqueen can run Focus Blast, so that's kind of scary, um, then it's, it's tough to keep this thing healthy. Outside of Wish Passing, which of course I do have on the team, thanks to Blair, and Blair's amazing bulk. So uh, you guys may not have noticed, but actually Grandina was the wrong gender last week. It was supposed to be female and it was male. So um, just putting that out there. All my genders are correct this time. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out actually to my gender, to uh, Eric, uh, Heavy Metal Pokemon. If you guys haven't noticed, his link is in the description down below of all of these videos. If you guys want to go and check out his content, he's a great, great gender. If ever you guys need any, any of his help, let me know. I'll get you in contact with him if you're not already and uh, he's super reliable. He never makes a mistake outside of that gender on uh, on Salamence last week. So uh, very good. Thank you, Eric, for all of your help. But that's it, guys. That's pretty much the team. As you guys saw, Gamagori, Blair, Serenity, Grandina, BML, and Toshiro are going to try to carry us to a 4-0 record this week, which is going to be extremely hard considering our opponent is the only other undefeated team in the league and probably the scariest. Uh, I've been dying to play Jolt in league format since he first subscribed to me last year uh, through the token minorities on YouTube, and uh, I've, I've seen how good he is and how, actually how amazing he is at uh, draft league format. I would put him in the top 10, uh, even this gen. He's really, really strong. And... Uh, like, I, I'm scared, but I'm really excited at the same time. I'm really looking forward to this game. So uh, make sure to check Jolt out in the description down below as well, guys. If you get a chance, uh, go and check out his content. Subscribe to him as well. And if you guys did enjoy this video, as usual, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe to me if you haven't already. And I will see you guys for the game tomorrow. Peace out, guys.